guys so welcome back to my channel what's going on so today I'm really excited because I wanted to show you guys my basically like everyday kind of like foundation and contour routine um, I'm really really excited to show you guys this I am very very full coverage and very much want to kind of cake my face so if you are not like that you can skip a lot of these steps but for me personally this is what I do every day and this is kind of what helps me get kind of a more flawless finish to my face so I'm so excited to show you guys this and I can't wait to kind of I don't know why I'm moving my hands so much I can't wait to show you guys everything so we are just gonna start taking out my little basket of my face um, basically all of these products are everything I use for my face just foundations and concealers and primers and stuff so what I like to do is start off with the milk makeup cooling stick and I like to go in and just put that on my under eyes and I have very very bad dark circles and also I like to put it on the perimeter of my face I have really bad dark circles this isn't really a necessary step but for me it kind of makes me feel a little bit more gives my face a little bit more hydration which I appreciate in the morning especially so I'm also going to take my Porefessionals from uh, Benefit and just squirt a little bit of this out and I'm going to focus this mostly in my T-zone area just because like my nose and my cheeks is where I get the most pores. I'm really going to pat this in because I find that patting it in, I heard that from I think it was Jaclyn Hill maybe, was talking about how if you pat it in it actually does to make your face look a little bit smoother and it helps the instead of just rubbing it all in it actually lets your skin absorb the makeup which is nice and then I'm also gonna put on my cheeks and just kind of dab and pat that in oh, oh, oh. all right so now that I'm done with that I'm going to take my e.l.f. Poreless Face Primer, and I'm going to pat that into the rest of my face. Now, a little note about this is that before I did all of this, I did do my nightly skincare routine, which I would be happy. I kind of rub and pat this, because if you pat it individually, it takes like six hours, and I don't have the patience to just sit here and pat my face. So I kind of like rub pat, um, rub pat. Um, I do have a nightly skincare routine that I do, and a morning skincare routine, they are different. So I do those for both morning and nighttime. So if you guys ever want to see something like that, just let me know. I find that patting it in definitely does help give me a more finished look. Also, this um this this primer from e.l.f. is only six dollars. It's actually really, really, really awesome. I kind of swear by e.l.f. primers. They are very silicone-y, so if you're not, like, in love with that type of feeling, I wouldn't suggest these. But for me personally, they work very, very well. So next I'm going to take the Cover Correcting Wheel, it's like the Cover All Correcting Palette from Wet n Wild. And I'm just going to use, hmm, I guess we'll do the green. I'm going to put the green wheel right here. I just use my finger and kind of rub it on my cheeks because that's where I have the most redness. And I like to kind of just rub that out and get rid of a little bit of that redness. And then I also like to take the yellow color corrector. I know you're supposed to use the green one for like pimples and stuff too. But I find that the yellow one actually helps conceal my pimples a little bit better. Um, that could just be for my skin tone. But for me personally, the yellow, conceal the yellow color corrector right here helps me a little bit more to conceal blemishes. I actually have a really good skincare routine going right now, so I don't have a ton of blemishes, which is nice. And I am going to take the purple and put it on my under eyes, just because. I definitely don't really know how to color correct too greatly yet, but when I do do it, I notice a significant improvement in how my foundation goes on. Everything just looks a little bit more put together when I color correct. So that's what I'm doing today. Okay, that's such a long process before you can actually start doing like the fun stuff. But I promise that all of this prep work that you're doing is really, really going to help give you longer lasting foundation. And it's also gonna help just like 
help with like, <laughs> I sound like an idiot, but it's also gonna help you with like your pores and blemishes and everything. Like the more that you prep your face before you put on the product, the better the product is going to look on your face, if that makes sense. So I'm going to take my beauty blender. Sorry, the lighting just got all weird. I'm back. So I'm going to take my beauty blender. It's important for it to just be kind of damp and not like soaking wet. I made the mistake really early on. I'm using the Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation, by the way, which is a medium coverage, but we're going to add a little bit more of a full coverage later. So I'm just gonna dip in. When I first started using my beauty blender, I would 150%. I made a lot of really bad mistakes. So first and foremost, I would get my beauty blender way too wet. So it ended up just soaking up a lot of my product. It wasn't even actually like getting used basically. Like I was just soaking it all up into the beauty blender. And secondly, I would, I took the term like beat your face way too literally. I would pound everything in like super hard. And I now realize that the softer you do it, the more gentle you are with your makeup, with any aspect of makeup, kind of the better. If you're able, also, if you guys don't like the way this video, I'm sorry, I'm so all over the place, but if you guys don't like the format of this video where it's not really edited and it's more just like me talking you through things, I'm basically doing this because I know personally when I watch makeup tutorials, I feel very overwhelmed at the fact that it goes so quickly and I don't feel like I can really properly follow along. So when I'm doing these sort of like technique videos, I really want to make sure that this is something that like you can do with me basically, like we're doing our makeup together. Um, just because I really want everyone to feel like they don't have to like rush or freak out if they miss a step, like you're, you're fine, like take your time, like you can just like chill, hang out, we can just do this together. So I'm just gonna apply the foundation really, really lightly. This is a really nice foundation, but buy it knowing that you're buying a medium coverage foundation because when I bought it I was very much expecting a full coverage foundation just because I didn't really properly research it I just heard everyone was talking about it and I was like oh I want that um so when I first bought it I really didn't love it just because I thought it was supposed to be full coverage and then it wasn't but for a medium coverage this is a really really great foundation and it leaves a really really beautiful like silky finish on the skin I don't know if I would recommend it for oily skin, just because I don't really have oily skin, I have more dry skin, but it's a little bit combination, so I guess I have a little bit of oil. Um, and on days when I'm very oily, this does not work super well for me. So I would definitely just make sure you kind of maybe buy like, get like a tester from Sephora first, just to see if you actually like the way that this looks, because you don't want to... The worst is when you buy something and realize it's not something you actually like, if that makes sense. So definitely use, try this out first, test it out first, find your correct shade, and then if you like it, go and buy it. But personally, this foundation routine can really work with any foundation. So next we're gonna be using the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. The Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation in Soft Ivory. I'm just gonna put this on my cheeks and maybe on my forehead a little bit too because I don't have a ton of coverage there. This is just to give me a little bit of extra coverage where I actually need it. I don't need a second layer for a lot of my face, but my cheeks get very, they're just very hard to cover because they're chipmunk cheeks and they're huge. Um, so I like to put a little bit of extra foundation on them just to kind of really, really, really full coverage and make sure that I have a very flawless finished look on my cheeks. The reason I like this particular makeup tutorial, like this particular like makeup look I've been doing lately is because I feel like it doesn't just look good in pictures, it actually looks good like in person. Like people will always tell me my skin looks really pretty and really like flawless and smooth and stuff and I definitely really really like that. I think that's a really nice compliment to get when you're wearing six layers of foundation. It's like, oh your skin looks really smooth because um, a lot of times it can get really gross really quick. So I just kind of pat, and also the thing about the, these two together work really well because the Makeup Forever is a little bit darker and then the Wet n Wild is a little bit lighter. So it tends to brighten up my cheeks, which I instantly love. Because once I put on like contour and bronzer and blush and everything, it gets a little bit, 
little bit dicey. All right, so we're just going to get it in the hairline especially. I'm not really going on my neck right now. I, you should, you should go on your neck normally, um, but I'm going to bed after I film this, so I don't really want to get it all on my neck and then have to take it all off. So normally I would go on my neck as well, but for right now, this is fine. You can't even really see my neck because I'm wearing a hoodie, so. So this is what it should look like after you've put on foundation. You're gonna look really pale and kind of weird, but this is just kind of like the process of how things go. So next I'm going to be using the So next I'm going to be using the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer for my under eyes. I'm really excited because I love this stuff. This is like literally the best concealer I think I've ever used. I'm going to start right here and just kind of fan it out and I'm doing again really full coverage. So I'm going to bring it all the way up here and just kind of pat this on. So the reason I love this stuff, it's just absolutely like the most, I don't know why I said absolutely like that, the most natural full coverage. Those aren't two things you normally hear in the same sentence, but this stuff is just so incredibly good. Like everything about it is just so perfect. I absolutely love it. Um, to brighten everything else up, I am going to take the Tarte Rainforest of the C Concealer. I do use the shape tape for this sometimes, but I typically just pick my brightest concealer and then just go from there so I'm just going to cover this cover this do a little tribal stuff you basically want to look like a warrior when you're done with this like you just really want to look like you're ready to like mess everybody up anybody comes at you like you're ready so I'm gonna let that set in for a second I dropped my beauty blender I drop everything uh, <laughs> so we are just going to take our beauty blenders then and pat in our faces. Um, I do like to let this set normally a little bit longer, but for the sake of the video, I am just going to start doing it now. So it might not look as good as it normally does, but the longer you let it set and kind of get absorbed into your face, the better coverage you're going to have. Um, it's going to really look very, very, very pretty the longer you keep it in. So I like to start right here at the corner, right here. And just lightly, lightly, lightly tap. And the reason I like to do that so lightly is because it keeps everything where it's supposed to be. So if I go in like dragging and really trying to like immediately make it blended, it's not going to look as good. Whereas if I take my time with it and really let it. I love the Urban Decay because it literally gives my skin like a glossy finish and I look plastic and I absolutely love that. Um, but if you just give it time and really take your time with it, you're gonna have really, really gorgeous results. I think the issue, the biggest problem people have with makeup is that you don't take enough time to like properly do everything. That's a problem I have too. Because when I'm rushing in the morning, I don't always have, to, like I'm getting ready for school or I'm getting ready for work. I don't always have time to like really properly cake my face and I feel like that definitely makes a difference like when I have time to properly sit down and do this whole foundation routine my face is gonna look so much better than when I have to throw it all on in 25 minutes in the morning because like I slept through my alarm so I think if you have the time to do it properly like if you if you're going out for example and you really want to do a full coverage face this is the perfect thing to do because you have the time to actually sit down and do everything that you want to do um, if I could sit down all day and just play with makeup, I think I would be like the happiest girl on the planet. I don't think you'd ever hear me complain because I love doing my makeup. Okay, so that's all set. And at this point, you're just, you are going to look a little bit cakey, but it's because we haven't added the powders. So just like bear with me for one more second. So I am going to take, not this brush. This brush. I'm going to take one of these brushes and I am going to dip into I'm going to dip into my Kat Von D shade and light. I'm going to take this, the one that's hip pan, this one right here. I'm just going to lightly dip my brush into that, tap it out a little bit, and then just pat that powder. I'm not going to brush because I don't like that. I like the patting. Um, just set, pat that powder 
onto here. You really want to tap out the brush every time you put it on because the last thing you want to do is over cake this part. This is kind of like do or die. It's really easy to over cake your face. And it's really easy to put too much on. And that's when you're gonna have a problem. The reason I like to do this before I do all the other parts of my face, like my contour and stuff, unless I'm doing a cream contour, which I don't do that often, the reason I like to do this is because it makes the bronzer and everything go on a lot smoother when I have set my face already. Um, so once you're done with liquid, it's kind of like liquid and then powder. Um, you should never be putting a liquid over a powder. And you should never just be putting a powder straight over a liquid without setting anything first. There's a spider. Oh, I just panicked. Babe! There's a spider! Okay, I had to call my boyfriend in to kill the spider. So now we're gonna get on to powder. Normally I use the Laura Mercer translucent setting powder, but I'm currently out of that. And I have found a cheap dupe for it if you are the right skin color. Um, it is actually a foundation, but it doesn't have any coverage. It's like a really lightweight powder from CoverGirl. And I like to use this to set the outer perimeters of my face, just because, and I use this like flat kabuki brush just to set all of this because I find that it makes my face look really, really, really smooth. And it also has just that hint of color to it that makes it a little bit better for me. Um, it gives me that little bit of color where I'm about to put bronzers and stuff, which I like. And it also does work really, really, really well. It definitely sets your whole face, keeps everything in place, and I definitely have noticed a significant improvement in my makeup since I started using it. I don't think I like it better than the Laura Mercer setting powder, but it's definitely super nice. So now we're all done with like the boring stuff and we can do like the fun stuff, like the contouring and everything. I am going to spritz my face with some of this e.l.f. Makeup Mist and Set spray, just because after I do the powder, I like to just do another layer of stuff and kind of mist my face over. Just see, so just so you know, I hate the like minute after. Just so you know that everything that you just put in is going to stay into place. So now the fun part. <coughs> wow, that got like right in my throat. Now the fun part, which is contouring. So I'm going to take this more like fluffy contour brush. I'm going to dip it into the other thing I've hit pan on in this palette, which is this brown shade for the Kat Von D. And to contour, people are very intimidated by contouring, um, but it's actually really easy. I find the key to contouring is just following the lines you already have on your face. So if you pull the fish face, mm -hmm, that's the line you're gonna wanna follow for your contour. And you're gonna wanna start probably right, right where the dimple is, right here, and then follow that up and always put on less powder and then apply more as you need because I find that another mistake people make is they try to do a way too intense one way too soon. It's better to start off with less product and then kind of work up what you already have than start out really intense and try to take that away. noticing that my lip is not super blended so I'm just fixing that sorry so now we're gonna do the other cheek and now you don't have to do your chin and your jaw but I do because I have a little bit of more flab on my chin so I like to try and conceal that and make my jawbone a little bit more intensified and a little bit more chiseled with the help of contouring. Alright. And that kind of gives me a little bit slimmer of a face. And then next we're just going to contour our foreheads to just kind of make that a little bit tinier. 
have a smaller of a forehead. I'm just also gonna, I do my nose real quick because I like the shape of my nose and I don't like to change it. So if you like to change your nose, look up another video and find somebody who teaches you how to do it because I don't really do that. Not too shabby. Okay. Now we are going to bronze. Bronze, bronze, bronze. So my bronzer of the moment. Okay, it was always the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. That was like my fave for a while. And then I was kind of on that like chocolate Soleil bronzer from Too Faced. Newest addiction has been the Hula bronzer by Benefit. I bought the smaller size because I thought it was just going to be hype. But this bronzer has actually turned out to be absolutely amazing so I actually would recommend it I am probably once I finish this up going to go back and get the full size or just keep buying the minis because they're cheaper <laughs> and they it's lasted me a while I've used it I've literally used this every day for two weeks and there's not even a dent in it yet so you honestly might be able to get away with getting the smaller bronzer depending on the amount of bronze you use I guess I'm just gonna take this flat little bronzy fluffy flat top brush and apply that kind of up here just to darken it uh, kind of the apples of my cheeks right above where I just put the bronze where I just put the um, contour and then again down below here you're just kind of going to make a big three on your face I think anyone who follows Kim Kardashian has heard this trick because this is the one she always talks about okay and now you're bronzed yay so next we're going to do blush and while we're on it, we might as well do a Benefit blush, I guess. I'm going to be using the Benefit blush by California. Looks like this. I've been trying out their box of powders a lot lately because I finally have kind of bought into the hype. And they're actually not disappointing me. It smells like tangerines too, which I think is really cute. So this is just going to give you, you know how you just kind of took away all the redness from your face? Now you're going to put it back on, but it's going to be a little bit more controlled. So I'm just going to tap this out. I don't like a lot of pigmentation on my face when bl with blushes. I kind of like it to be a more subtle blush, which is why I like this one, because it's very, very, very subtle while still having some pigment. So you're just going to smile. Smile big, cheese it up, and you're just going to smile and apply that on your apples of your cheeks and apply up. So you're just going to look a little crazy while you do it, but that's okay. That is okay. Can never tap it out too much you can always put on more you can't put on less very hard to take off very easy to put on I always try to look cute when I do it and I never look cute like I'm like serial killer style but I'm trying Ooh. just stab myself in the eye okay and finally highlight I guess I wasn't really gonna do like highlight for this video but I'm a sucker for highlight. I love highlight. Actually, I love highlight. It's my favorite. I think I am going to use my Anastasia. I've been trying to use this more, my Anastasia Glow Kit, because I don't use it nearly enough. So I'm just going to take this shade. Let's do Sunburst. I'm going to take the shade Sunburst right here, and I'm going to spray my little, this is like an e.l.f. highlighting brush, I think, I want to say. Yeah, it's an e.l.f. one. I'm going to spray it a little bit to pick up more product Whoop. this is having difficulty for me okay and you're just going to apply that right here in your cheek and then kind of bring it up this is very pretty I was free to have this palette because I have a lot of single highlighters that I'll typically go for but these Anastasia glow kits are just like there's a reason I think that they're such a staple in the makeup world and it's because they slay the game every day they always slay they're like the beyond Anastasia Beverly Hill is like the Beyonce of makeup I feel like she just always comes out with really consistently good products and I think she probably maybe with Too Faced too but I I would say in my opinion she has the most kind of like iconic products products that people are like oh brow is like oh like glow kits um the modern renaissance is like a cult classic so i think that these glow kits are kind of just 
another staple. Sorry, I'm just like rambling, but I love Anastasia Beverly Hills. I think she's so amazing for everything that she's accomplished with her brand. I just think they're so great. Does Anastasia Beverly Hills have a foundation? Can you guys let me know? That's a decent glow. We'll settle for, we'll settle for subtle. Now you're just gonna put some right on your nose. I do this every single day. I don't know why, I just like the way it looks, so. Um, let me know if Anastasia has a, it looks so weird. This looks so strange without other products on, like my other, the rest of my face. But this is my everyday foundation routine. I know it's a little bit lengthy. I know it's a little bit long, but it's worth it because it'll give you really flawless looking skin and a really, really gorgeous base so you can do everything else you want to do. I am going to finish by using my Makeup Revolution Pro Fix Illuminating Spray. Which is a dupe for the MAC Fix, Matte, Matte, MAC Fix Plus, which I'm going to buy soon because they're coming out with a limited edition one that smells like coconuts, and it's a gimmick, but it got me because I want it. So I'm just going to shake this up and then really spray it all. It's so bad. Really spray it all out. That was, this is bad. This is, was a bad idea to do on camera. I should have just left it. But I think it looks better with my hair down. There we go. So this is just the end result. And you can see we have some glow. We have some blush. My skin looks really, really, really flawless. It is not gonna go anywhere, I swear to God. This is probably going to stay on. If I didn't take it off, this would last me all day. This is what I do every day and I go through like six hours of classes. I do field work at a school. Um, so I kind of do everything and this consistently stays on my face. So if you guys want to have a really, really full beat kind of face, this is definitely the way you should go. You don't have to use all the products I listed. You can use the products that work best for you, but I find that having at least similar stuff kind of helps. I don't know. I tried to offer cheaper alternatives. Uh, I can link dupes in the description, although a lot of the stuff I did use already is a dupe for things but if you want me to link other dupes for the more expensive products I used I'd be happy to do that because I am the queen of dupes I love dupes and I will give you all the dupes I will tell you dupes I will tell you everything you want to know thank you so much for watching this I'm sorry if I'm squinting I'm not wearing my glasses so I can't see my camera but thank you so much for watching this I had so much fun filming it if you liked this video please like it below and please subscribe to my channel because I do fun things like talk about makeup and um, show you guys makeup tutorials. So please like and subscribe, and it has been so fun talking to you guys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you. I dropped something. Bye. <laughs>